Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In this video, we're going to continue with pathfinding. And instead of moving just a part, we're going to move a humanoid model. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, and we can see just like before, we created a path. And now this humanoid model is moving along that path to get to the red block. And there we go. So let's see how we can do this in Roblox Studio. Okay, the setup for this is a little bit different than our prior videos. What we're going to need in this video is a humanoid model. And for this one, I just got this from the toolbox by searching NPC. And then I selected this one down here. One thing to keep in mind with this model is it already has an animation script. So when you're doing pathfinding for it, it may run into some issues. I'm just using it because it already has the animations built in and it works well enough for an example. You're also going to need some type of ending point, and I'm just using the same red block that I did before. After you have those two things, and maybe like a maze or some objects on the screen, then the last thing we have to do is add a script for the workspace. For the script, the first thing we're going to do is say local path parts is equal to game dot workspace dot path. And I think I forgot to mention this, but if this is the first video you're watching in this series, then we also created an empty model called path where we're going to store all the path parts. Okay, next we're going to define the ending point. So we'll say local finish is equal to game dot workspace dot finish. And this is the red part where the model will be moving to. Next we're going to say local dummy is equal to game dot workspace dot dummy. If you're using a different name for your humanoid model, make sure you update it in this line right here. So for example, if your model says like NPC or something like that, then change dummy to whatever the name of the model is. Next, we're going to define the humanoid part. So we'll say local humanoid is equal to dummy dot humanoid. Next, we're going to be using the pathfinding service. So we'll say local pathfinding service. And this is going to be equal to game colon get service. Inside the parentheses, we'll put pathfinding service. Next, we're going to be defining our path object. So we'll say local path is equal to pathfinding service. colon, and then create path. After that, we'll compute the path between the model and the red part by saying path, colon, compute, async. And then in the parentheses, we'll define the starting position and the ending position. The starting position is going to be dummy dot torso. And in some models, this will be like the humanoid root part, dot position. That will be the starting location. The ending location will be finish, dot position. And if you need to, with whatever model you're using, you can just open it up and see if it has a torso or maybe a humanoid root part. It could have both. If it has both, then I would use the humanoid root part. After that, we're going to say local waypoints. So this is where we're going to store all the points for the path. And this is going to be equal to path colon get waypoints. Next, we're going to be looping through waypoints. So we're going to say for underscore comma waypoint in pairs. Inside the parentheses, we're going to be looping through waypoints. And what we're going to do first is illustrate that path by putting parts at each position. We can do that by saying local part is equal to instance dot new. And then we're making a new part. And then from here, we're just defining some different properties of this part. I just went ahead and pasted it in. And if you want to change some of these, feel free. So basically what we're doing is just making a new part with some different properties. After that, we're going to use another loop. So we'll say for underscore comma waypoint. 
in pairs, just like before. And this time what we're going to do is we'll say humanoid, colon, move to. Inside the parentheses will be the position we want it to move to. And that will be waypoint dot position. And just be careful here. We don't want to move to waypoints dot position because waypoints is a collection of points. We just want to move to a particular point inside of that big list. And after that, we'll say humanoid dot move to finished colon wait. Okay, and that should do it, and we'll run it in just a second. But basically, all we're doing is we're creating a path and then having that humanoid part of the model move to each position in waypoints. So let's go ahead and take a look and make sure we didn't make any mistakes with this. Okay, everything looks pretty good. One thing I will warn you though is that jumping action is built into the script that comes with this NPC. If you're using a different type of model that didn't have that built into it already, then you would have to tell it when to jump. Lastly, before we end with this video, if that built-in script is causing you issues with your pathfinding, then what you can do is just go under the model and delete it. It'll still work with our script. One thing you're going to lose though is the animations. So now if I run the code, it'll still work. It'll still go toward the model but you won't have the walking or jumping animations anymore. And as you can see, it still made it there. It just didn't have the animations with it. Okay, this is going to be the end of this video. We're going to continue with pathfinding in the future, so stay tuned for the next one.